Hi, greetings to all. Uh, my name is Deepak. I'm working as a uh, oil and gas uh, trainer in uh, Reliant Institute of Oil and Gas. Then uh, I'm having uh, almost 14 plus years experience uh, in oil and gas projects as well as other mechanical projects like uh, boiler, pressure vessel, pipeline construction, rig construction, etc. So uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, what is oil and gas. Uh, basically, uh, everyone thinks about like oil and gas means uh, either drilling or refinery. So actually the oil and gas is uh, you know divided into three sectors like upstream, midstream and downstream. So before going into that subject, so let me introduce how this oil and gas has formed. So let us see what are the contents we are going to see in this uh, topic. So we are going to talk about energy source, what is uh, renewable energy and non-renewable energy source. Then we are going to talk about oil and gas formation, how the oil and gas is formed and uh, what are the techniques in order to bring the oil and gas from the ground or from the ocean flow to the surface. Then we are going to uh, have a discussion over industrial projects. What are the different uh, projects in oil and gas? And uh, uh, finally, how can we uh, enter into these projects? And what are the necessary things we need, we need to know in order to enter oil and gas sector? So first, what is fossil fuel? And uh, how energy is coming from fossil fuel? So, uh, first of all, there are two types of energy sources. One is non-renewable, another one is renewable sources. So, renewable energy sources like solar, wind, hydropower, etc. So, these are renewable energy sources, so which can be replenished uh, every time easily uh, by itself. But non-renewable resources takes longer time to form and also it is uh, sometimes you know it will get over like uh, it forms a, it will be having a reservoir or some level of like amount of uh, energy where after we extract all those energy it will not be formed or it will take much longer time to form that source. So uh, non-renewable resources like oil, crude oil and uh, natural gas, then coal and also nuclear energy. So how oil and gas is formed? So what is the you know a mechanism uh, behind the formation of oil and gas? So first the marine organisms and also the ancient plants and ancient animals died after that it deposited decomposed in the ground after multiple sedimentation layers, it formed a product called kerogen. So after kerogen, uh, you know, deep into the uh, soil, it, uh, you know, entered the in between the rocks and uh, due to the high pressure and high temperature, it started to become an oil and also from the oil, uh, some amount of natural gas uh, is formed. So basically natural gas is a uh, hydrocarbon, purest form of hydrocarbon, uh, primarily CH4 that is methane. And also we have water vapor, hydrogen sulfide, usually a byproduct when we dig or when we uh, drill. So from the oil well, we get oil as well as the natural gas. So when we talk about uh, oil and gas industry, so it is widely divided into three sectors like uh, upstream, midstream and downstream. So, you know, if you see upstream, so it involves uh, exploration, drilling and production. Then uh, in the case of midstream, storage of oil, storage of gas, oil transportation, natural gas transportation. Then uh, when it comes with the downstream, so it is like refining and marketing. So what is refining? So it is something like, you know, breaking uh, the raw form of a crude oil 
and uh, you know the crude oil is boiled and the vapors are transferred into the FDC for, uh, that is the fraction distillation column and in the fraction distillation column at different heights different distillates are produced like light distillates, medium distillates and heavy distillates like kerosene, petrol, diesel, heavy engine oil, gasoline etc. So this is about the uh, industry so upstream, midstream and downstream. So there are upstream projects, midstream projects and downstream projects. So this is what exactly the oil and gas industry is. So upstream, midstream and downstream. So we make a rig and we drill and we produce oil as well as the gas. We transport it to the storage tank and uh, we store it in between, you know, offshore storage is there, onshore storage is there, then gas storage system is there. So from the storage unit, uh, we are transporting it to the refinery, so where the oil is refined uh, and uh, you know we are dividing it to multiple byproducts like uh, using FDC. So what is FDC? Fraction distillation column which is in the refinery and uh, it breaks the vapor of uh, oil, crude oil into multiple byproducts. It is distilled in a different heights uh, into a different product like petrol, diesel, uh, engine oil and uh, you know liquid petroleum gas then uh, a byproduct like you know like uh, butane uh, and multiple uh, product and heavy distillates like asphalt heavy engine oils lubricating oils waxes greases etc so uh, even the natural gas is uh, compressed and uh, frozen uh, like at the temperature of minus 163 degrees celsius and it is compressed into a liquefied natural gas when the natural gas is frozen and compressed it will become a uh, LNG liquefied natural gas and that liquefied natural gas is again sent to the downstream industry where the gasification unit is there so they turn back the LNG into CNG compressed natural gas so now we are going to see uh, different projects like upstream projects midstream projects and downstream projects so first we will see the upstream project so we have a rig construction projects where the structural welding and welding inspection, painting inspection and NDT work will be happening. And then uh, uh, we have a pipeline construction inside the uh, rig unit or drilling unit. Then uh, we have a material testing and uh, testing of weld, weld repairs, maintenance of uh, rig equipments like pumps, etc. Then um, and also uh, drilling work is there so like uh, we make a uh, uh, drilling with the help of a rig uh, almost it takes 21 to 28 days to complete the oil well so that project is also coming under the upstream project so so next thing is we have midstream projects like uh, construction of storage tanks so it is a huge tank so uh, where we use a standard like uh, APA, American Petroleum Institute, uh, 650-653. Then also we uh, have a LNG uh, tank construction or LNG ship construction. Then we have a, a transportation projects. So like uh, uh, the, the you know uh, cross country pipeline project like uh, it comes under like a api 1104 american petroleum institute 1104 so you know it helps to transport the oil uh, from uh, offshore unit to the onshore unit or even sometimes in between the country like inside the country uh, we call it as a cross country pipeline so the pipeline is laid across the country like from one state to another state or one district to another state or, or from harbor to the uh, you know refinery unit so that those things you know coming under the uh, api 1104 that is uh, transportation of oil like uh, cross country pipeline project so Next thing is downstream projects. So what is downstream project? Uh, like it is coming under refining. Refining and marketing is there. So refining um, coming under ASME B31.3 process piping. So we have uh, uh, you know fa boiler fabrication or installation of boiler 
uh, installation of pressure vessels, then uh, container, storage tank, then uh, construction of FDC, fraction distillation column. Uh, and also in between we have uh, uh, process equipments like valves, uh, then we have uh, you know reboilers, uh, heat exchangers. So you know all these things you know the pipelines etc all are constructed with the help of welding. Uh, where like uh, flanged joints are there, welded joints are there, painting will be happening, then uh, you know something like you know assembly joints, all those uh, piping fabrication and uh, pipeline construction, uh, both uh, you know uh, re related to the uh, API 510, 570, then uh, ASME B 31.3. So all these, uh, you know, codes and standards, a particular uh, person who is uh, involved in a project, uh, oil and gas project or refinery project or a storage construction project and a pipeline construction project or reconstruction structural welding project. So anyone who is want to become a, a QC or QA. Uh, they should have a knowledge about the codes and standards. Even the NDT technician or inspector or engineer should know the codes and standards related to the uh, project. So the finally the shutdown and maintenance uh, thing will be there. You know, like um, uh, the you know the uh, refineries are. Uh, shut down a particular unit in the refinery is shut down and uh, we do maintenance work we do repair work we do a replacement of uh, equipments uh, devices uh, gauges etc so uh, it comes you know it involves documentation so a QC engineer should know what is documentation what are the quality documents we have like WPS, PQR, ITP, WQT should know how to qualify a welder and also should know uh, a proper documentation in uh, NDT non-destructive testing then um, you know it should know how to qualify a PQR procedure qualification record then uh, should know uh, drawings isometric drawings uh, GAD drawings and PNID drawings then also should you know, have a knowledge on uh, f uh, weld fabrication drawings etc and also we do corrosion mapping uh, with the help of uh, th uh, ultrasonic thickness gauging then also we do uh, repair welding painting uh, coating so all these things will be coming under the uh, you know downstream shutdown projects so how we can enter into the oil and gas industry so you can see here in the picture that uh, there are uh, professional like uh, roaster boats uh, there are professionals like you know the mechanical engineer so who are very specially trained to be in the uh, rig uh, operation also oil and gas projects so what makes you to enter you know easily into the oil and gas industry so the first thing you should have a knowledge on quality assurance and quality control in welding so we uh, cover up uh, welding fabrication then uh, arc welding processes fit up then inspection before during and after welding then uh, fabrication drawings repair heat treatment etc so so many uh, things which is uh, related to the site and you know, as per the industrial standards we cover up so that the particular candidate can enter into the um, you know quality controlling and quality assurance of a particular product then we also teach uh, piping and pipeline construction along with the uh, you know industrial documents uh, like uh, isometric drawing GAD general arrangement drawing PNID PFD BFD etc uh, and also we teach them uh, how they do uh, leak testing, hydro testing, etc. Then we also train the candidates for oil and uh, especially those who want to go into the oil and gas sector and non-oil and gas sector like uh, uh, non-destructive testing. Then uh, as per ASNT, American Society of Non-Destructive Testing. Then also we also give training on uh, uh, drilling onshore and offshore drilling, uh, rig construction and drilling operation and a roaster boat training and offshore safety like bosite, what is bosite, what is huet, what is foet and uh, how you know you can utilize this knowledge in uh, you know real time drilling operation in the oil and gas industry. So 
uh, if you have uh, this knowledge, so apart from uh, no oil and gas industry, where else you can apply? You can apply. You can apply job for in uh, uh, automobile sector, aviation, boiler pressure vessel, uh, pressure parts fabrication, vessel fabrication, pharmaceutical units, chemical industry, fertilizer company, pipeline projects, then foundry like casting, forging, then steel manufacturing, steel pipe and tube manufacturing. Then uh, CNC uh, machining, after the machining is over, so you are about to do uh, conduct uh, non-destructive testing and uh, should know any other crack or uh, you know uh, any other defects present in the material. So you can also uh, conduct, if you know NDT non-destructive testing, you can also perform in-service inspection. Uh, so after a long period of time, a uh, small small crack in the surface will happen in the uh, long term you know uh, the, the product which is in the long term service like pipeline uh, gears and uh, any other like lifting equipment rotary equipment etc so you can also work in the energy units like windmill uh, construction then shipyards you can work in shipyards so finally we have come to a conclusion so we have covered uh, what is oil and gas and uh, what is oil and gas industry like what is upstream midstream downstream and uh, what are the projects in upstream, midstream and downstream and what else we have to know, uh, we get trained so that we can easily enter into the uh, oil and gas industry. Hope you have all understood uh, the things which I have discussed in, the, in this session. So if you have further doubts, you can contact us to the given number below in the description and uh, see you in the next session and I am Deepak from Irland Institute of Oil and Gas. Thank you.